Hi, in this video we'll learn how to subtract a mixed fraction from a whole number. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this whole number into a fraction and then I'm going to convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So let's do that. I'm going to write 5 as 5 over 1. Remember that whenever you have whole, whenever you have a whole number and you want to write that in the form of fraction, you can always set the denominator equal to 1. And you don't change the value of it, right? Because 5 divided by 1 is still going to give you 5, right? Now we're going to put the minus sign in between, and I'm going to convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply my whole number with the fraction's denominator. 4 times 5 is going to give me 20, and then we add that to the numerator. So 20 plus 2 is going to give me 22, so I'm going to put 22 here, and then we don't change the denominator, so the denominator is still going to be 5. Now, you can see that I have got different denominators. So these are unlike fractions, and we cannot subtract these fractions unless we have the same denominator. So I need to do something to these fractions to make the denominators equal. All I know is I need to multiply something into these fractions to make the denominators equal. Now, I cannot multiply anything into 5 to make it equal to 1, but I can multiply something into 1 to make it equal to 5, right? If I multiply this denominator by 5, See, 5 times 1 is going to give me 5, and I'll get the same denominators, and then I'll be able to subtract the fractions. So I multiplied the denominator by 5. If I multiplied the denominator by 5, I would also have to multiply the numerator by 5 because I need to balance the fraction, right? So now you see that this is 5 divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is nothing but 1. This is just a fancy form of writing 1, right? And 1 times 5 over 1 is still 5. So you did not change anything. This is still 5, right? But this is just different form of writing it. Okay? And then now we, we're going to multiply the numerator with the numerator and denominator with the denominator, right? So let's do that. 5 times 5 is going to give me 25. And then 5 times 1 is going to give me 5. And then add the minus sign in between. And then we're going to leave this fraction as it is 22 over 5. And you see that I got the same denominators. Now I can go ahead and subtract the numerators. Let's subtract the numerators. 25 minus 2 is going to give me 3. And then we never subtract the denominators, so I'm going to leave my denominator as 5. So my answer is going to be 3 fifths. Since this is a proper fraction, I cannot reduce it anymore because 3 and 5 are both prime numbers. So this is going to be my final answer. Now, some students are confused with um, why did I multiply this by 5 over 5? I'm going to show you a different method. So you write the 5 as 5 over 1 like we did in this problem, okay? And then you convert this mixed fraction into an improper fraction like we did here. So we're going to write this as 22 over 5. Now we're going to look at this problem in a different way. I'm going to ask myself, what is the least common multiple of 1 and 5? Because I want to make the denominators equal. So I'm going to find the least common multiple of 1 and 5. The least common multiple of 1 and 5 is going to be 5. So now I know that my denominator should be 5 anyways. I got that point, right? So I want my denominator to be 5. What do I do into this fraction to make the denominator 5? So look at the denominators. What do I multiply in my denominator to make it 5? Well, I can multiply this by 5 because 5 times 1 is going to give me 5. Now, if I multiply the denominator by 5, I have to be fair. So I'm going to multiply my numerator also by 5 to balance my fraction. So that's how I got 5 or 5 here. Now, again, I did the same thing. 5 times 5 is going to be 25. I got 25 or 5 here, right? We have the denominator 5. So I don't have to do anything into this fraction. I can just leave this fraction as it is and then we can subtract. And then again, 25 minus 2 is going to give me 3. And then we never subtract the denominator. So we're going to get 3 fifths. That's all in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel and want to see more videos on other math topics, be sure to subscribe down below and share it with your friends. See you in next video.